Like I said, with Israel United in Christ, we're here to teach that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel according to the Bible. Have you all ever heard of that before? Yes. Yeah? Who told you that? You got a pastor. A pastor? He told you, which tribe did he tell you you were from? No, I don't know. We know. You don't want to know today? No. Okay, be equal on this to me. Let's see. How you doing, brother? You got a minute? You got a question for you. You only speak Spanish? No, I'm pretty sure you can hear some of this. Come on now. Come on, just tune in. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiment of the world, and not after Christ. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So philosophy and vain deceit. What are some of those philosophies that our people have been taught? One of those philosophies is that everybody's the same. We all come from the same place. Everybody's equal. Those things. There's only certain people that had to go through slavery. If we were all the same and created equal, then that would then that would pan out for our people, would it not read that part again? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. One of those vain deceits of philosophy is they don't teach you who the children of Israel actually are today. They tell you that those people stopped existing. They don't exist anymore. God got rid of them somehow. But that's not the truth of the matter, Reed. How are we doing today? After the I got a question for you. Have you ever heard that you all are the children of Israel? Yeah. You have? Okay, what well, if you look on this sign, would you happen to see what race you happen to be under? It'll be tied to a certain tribe. Here. Look down this side, it'll be easy. Okay, so you're American black. So we got Judah and we got Issachar standing right in front of us right now. They don't teach us that in church. They don't showcase this thing because this is not only documented in the Bible that it's you, it's also in their history books that it's you. Uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter 20. So God actually left some instructions in the Bible and some identifying factors that are going to tell you who these people are today. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, so the Most High God, specifically, put particular curses on a group of people that nobody else went through. It's so specific, in fact, that if you were to read them, you'd realize, hey, wait a second, that happened to my people. So go to, go to the next one. Verse 16. Listen to this. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So when you go into the cities, if we go to the hoods, the ghettos, what people are usually in those neighborhoods? What people is that? Usually. Usually. Who you, if you're going to go into a hood or a projects or anything, who you think you're going to find? Blacks. Blacks and Hispanics. The same people. All right, go ahead. Curse shall, thou, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. So it told you, curse shall you be in the city and curse shall you be in the field. If you look right here, this is what it's going into when you're cursed in the field, right? This not only happened to black people, this also happened to the Native American people as well. There's a parallel between what's happened to these group, two groups of people. We haven't been taught that we actually come from each other. We're the same family. We just come from different fathers, different tribes. That's the only thing separating the two of us right now. But God, in Deuteronomy 28, is showing you, hey, these are actually your brothers and sisters right here. 
Why? Because I put the same curse on them that I put on you. Exactly. Today we just walk past each other and we won't even say hello. Right. Some of us hate hate each other. We were taught that That's in school. That's why my daddy used to say yeah. Yeah. Like people are we're, we're your brothers. We just got separated because you all came over here first and we stayed. You all left. So this was all, this is supposed to be, this whole place, this is supposed to be your inheritance. That's what it's supposed to be. Uh, give me verse 46. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So. These curses, it doesn't matter how much time that goes by, as long as we're not keeping the laws of God, mm -hmm. these curses are gonna go on your kids, their kids after them, and their kids, it's just gonna keep on going. Why? Because he needs you to, he needs to get the point across. At some point in time, you're gonna have to sit there and say to yourself, give me a Lamentations 4 17. At some point, you're gonna have to say to yourself, hey, hold on, man. We've been voting, we've been marching, and that's been way back in the 60s, that's till now. I, I just found out that Native Americans are actually killed by the police more than black men are. And you don't ever hear about it because they get the black people to riot and tear places up. That's what they do. But you don't hear about the Native Americans. Uh, there's Native American women just disappearing at, at random. They, they just found a, a whole ship full of them that were gonna get sold off to some sex, sex people, sex slaves. They're gonna be, get sold for that. Sex That's what's gonna happen, sex trafficking, thank you. You, they were going to get sold. Read that for me. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. So we, our eyes are failing for help. We're looking for help, but we ain't getting it. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So, what nation are we looking to save us right now? What is happening right now, politically? Right now, everybody's getting ready to vote. They're like, oh, oh, you gotta vote or die. Vote or die, they keep saying that every single yeah. time. They get, hey man, you gotta vote. Hey, we voted or died the last time. Yeah. But they keep sitting there looking for a group of people that they put you in slavery. They're not gonna try to help you. You're not gonna save you. Read, read it. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So even God's telling you, these people are not going to save you. The only thing that's going to save you is when you sit there and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's the only way they're going to get saved. So you notice that this is the Bible, right? Yeah. Right. Read the verse again because it says something heavy. Watch this. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. What is vain help? What does that mean, vain help? You're looking for somebody to help you, but it's vain help, meaning they're not really helping you. Because what do they do? They give you some Section 8 housing. They give you some food stamps. They give you a little bit, a little bit. But yeah, what are they doing? At the same time, they still oppressing you. They still not giving you the tools that you can become self-sufficient on your own. They're not doing those things. So the help that they do give you, it's vain help. It's like a man who's in a relationship with a woman and he's abusive. He don't want her to leave, but he's abusive. So what does he do? After he beats her, he buys her something. And she feels, and it's just enough to, just to keep her around and keep her, to make her stay and say, well, he loves me. That's what America does with our people. They do just a little bit, just enough. Keep them around. Just to keep us around because they know that this nation will crumble without us. They need us. We're the workforce of America. They need blacks and Hispanics and Native and Indians. They need us. So watch it. Read again. As for us, uh -huh. our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Come on. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So we look for America to save us and to help us. That's why people go out and vote. Because they got faith that things could change. But the Bible says that this nation cannot save us. This is the same nation that put us in slavery, did all of this to us. And now what do we do? We pack in the ghettos and we pack in the prisons. So hold on. But it says this nation could not save us, so who's going to save us? Watch, I'm going to show you. Because the Bible has all the answers. See, what it is is a lot of Christian pastors and a lot of Christian churches are out here, but they're not teaching the truth. They're teaching what the government has taught them to teach. That's the reason why they get uh, 
pushed into the mainstream media. Why is that? Because they're pushing a doctrine or a philosophy that is beneficial to the government. But what we teach is the truth according to God, whether they like it or not. Right. So watch what the Bible says. Watch. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Uh-huh. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. So the God of the Bible is the God of Israel, the God of the Israelites, which is our people that you see on this sign. Come on. And hath raised up a horn of salvation. A horn of salvation means a leader of salvation. Who's the leader of salvation in this Bible? Jesus Christ. Right? Read on. For us in the house of his servant David. Come on. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Uh huh. Which has been since the world began. Because the prophets prophesied about Christ. Read on. That we shall be saved. That what? That we shall be saved. That we should be saved. Come on. From our enemies. So hold on. The purpose of Christ was to save us from who? From our enemies. So who's our enemies? Because we just read in Lamentations that we watch for a nation that could not save us. So who's our enemies that we need to be saved from? Huh? You see that? It's, the Bible's very simple. But they'll have you believing that you need to love and hug everybody. The Bible don't teach that. Because what was all the loving and the hugging when we was in slavery? Where's all the loving and the hugging when they beating us down on the street corners with the billy clubs? Right. Right. So now, the purpose of Christ was to do what? To save the Israelites, to save our people. So guess what? Give me that in uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 6. Now, I'm going to show you something because this Bible is very, very deep. And a lot of our people, we neglect to read it. But we have to come back and we have to study it because it's our book. It's our, it's, it's the key to our salvation. Come on. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Read. Seeing it is a righteous thing which God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So it says it's a righteous thing with God to bring tribulation to those that troubled us. So look at the trouble that they get did to us. Look at all of this. Yokes of iron upon the head. You know how heavy this is on this brother's neck? Weighing his neck down, chains, being so separated from our sons and our daughters and our wives, being brought over here, forced, forced to be sold like we were like we were cattle. Forced to pick cotton in the baking heat. Beat if you didn't do enough. This is in the Bible. All this is written in the Bible. But watch what God said about this. Read it again. See, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them which trouble you. See, what the Christian pastors will try to tell you, what the white man will try to tell you is, oh, you got to turn the other cheek. You got to turn the cheek. If they smite you on one cheek, turn the other No, 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 no. That's, we, we, we apply that to the other nations, but we don't apply that to each other because if another brother step on a brother's shoe, what are you ready to fight? If a brother just walk by you, he's just minding his own business, you ready to find out where he's from, what he's doing in your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. But if the white man walk through, you don't say nothing. You quiet. Because our minds have been conditioned to be that way. But God said, no, we're going to recompense tribulation to those that troubled us. Your brother didn't trouble you. These people that did this, these are the ones that troubled us. Come on. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. So it says be patient with God. You have to be patient with God. Come on. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. Hold on, stop. So remember we just read in Luke that he said he was going to save us from our enemies. This is how he's going to save us from our enemies. Right? Because Christ died, but he's going to come again. Watch. Read. As he should be revealed. As he should, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. You see that? He's going to be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. He's coming back with an army of angels. Come on. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. You see that? He's going to come back and it's going to be vengeance. He, see, in the Christian church, they try to tell you when Christ comes back, it's going to be all love, hugs, candy. It's going to be a pleasant day. But no, 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 no. That ain't what it's going to be like. That ain't what it's going to be like because this earth is full of sin, full of evil, full of iniquity. And he's coming to rid this earth of iniquity, rid this earth of sin. How is he going to do it? He's going to do it by what? In flaming fire. By fire. He's going to burn this earth. Come on. Taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh-huh. And that obey 
not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it just gave you some keys right there. It says what? How are you going to be able to be saved in that time? What must you be doing? Man. Read that part again. That not on them that know not God. Read on. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does that mean? So how do you get saved in that day? You must be doing what? Read that second part again. And that's obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. See that? So we have to be obeying the gospel. Because he said he's gonna take vengeance on them that know not God. Because everybody said, oh, I know God. I've been to church. I pray, I sing, I cry. I do all these things. I hug my neighbor. But hold up. Give me that in first John. Because it says that know not God. What does it mean to not know God? How do you know that you know God? You know God, brother? I would say I do, but I really do. Okay. What about you? You'll say you don't really you don't think so. Right? Okay, so watch what the Bible says. Watch. The book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Come on. And hereby we do know that we know him. This is how we know that we know him. Which is talking about God. Come on. If, if we keep his commandments. If we keep God's commandments. That's how you know you know God. If you keep his commandments. Because those people that know God, they're going to be obedient unto his word. Meaning what? When he says a commandment that says thou shalt not steal, you're going to keep that. You're going to keep that because you know God. Because we know that God is a very fearful, dreadful God. He's not all loving like people like to believe. This is the same God who flooded the earth and killed everybody except Noah and his family. Imagine everybody drowned. And that means he drowned babies. He drowned kids. He drowned women. Elderly. Everybody got killed. That's in the Bible. But see, we don't like to acknowledge that part. We only want the loving and goodness from God. No, 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 no. God is a dreadful God. He's very fearful. That's why when God came down and he was dealing with Moses, the Israelites was too afraid to even get near. They said, no, 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 Moses, you deal with him. Because it was thunder and lightning and the earth was shaking. All type of stuff was going on and it was fearful. So they said, no, whatever you say, Moses, we're going to follow. We're going to do. Just tell us what he said. We don't want to meet him. But a lot of people in Christian church, they're like, oh yeah, we love God and I know God. But it says you got to keep his commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I see, we deliver the truth. <laughs>